There are many helpful tools you can use in your practice. Apps to sing along with, record, transcribe, or even create charts. The possibilities are endless and overwhelming. Which ones will be worth your time and money? Software and apps come and go, but the best stick around because users love using them and their developers make regular updates and improvements based on customer feedback. So they just keep getting better. In this lesson, I'd like to share some of my favorite apps with you. Let's start with one of the most helpful and robust apps I've ever used. It's called iReal Pro, and it's fantastic to use for practice. It does so many different things. It also works on iOS, Android devices, and Mac desktop computers. What you see here is my desktop version. The app comes preloaded with a few practice tunes, but what makes this app unique are the thousands of charts you can download for free from the iReal forum. So let's head up to the forums button and check it out. The forum is where iReal users upload song charts they've created. You can find almost all musical styles here, jazz, funk, pop, blues, country. Here are the main playlists. I've downloaded most of them already, but I don't have the country playlist yet, so let's download that one now. So all you have to do is click on it, open the link, it asks you if you want to import the playlist, so I'm going to go ahead and import it, and there's all the country tunes. Now the fun begins. Once you've got some charts loaded, it's time to start playing around with them. I've got a song that I'd like to practice called Bye Bye Blackbird. I've already placed it in a playlist called Practice Charts. It's right over here, so let's click on that. And there it is. This folder doesn't have a lot of music in it, but if it did, there's a handy search bar up here that I could type the song name into to find it. All right, so there it is. You can also sort the songs in each file by title, composer, or style. This is handy when you're creating a set list and are looking for songs in a specific style. You can change how you see the chart up here in this font bar. So there's a couple different fonts that are available up here. Handwriting. You can also see number notation and piano, one hand, piano, two hands, and ukulele. I like classic because it's easy to see. So I'm going to leave it there. Let's come down here to the play button and see what this chart sounds like. Not too bad for fake instruments, right? iReal Pro shows you where you are in the chart with the yellow highlighter. You can see it moving through the tune. Okay. Each chart tends to be in the key it was originally written in. Not a great key for you? You can go ahead and change it. Just click on the key over here and you've got all your options. One of my favorite features of this app is the style button. Click on it and you'll see some options for changing the feel. Now when I'm first learning a song, I practice using the same stylistic feel as the recording I'm listening to as a model. But once I've got the song in my head, I like to change it up and create my own interpretation of it. iReal makes it really easy with this feature. So if I'm singing it in this jazz, up-tempo, swing feel, it might sound something like this. Pack up all my care and woe, here I go singing low, bye, bye blackbird. Where somebody waits for me, sugar sweet, so is he, bye bye blackbird. But like I said, I like to change it up, so let's check out the Latin bassa acoustic setting. Pack up all my care and woe, here I go singing low. Bye bye, blackbird. So, a little slower, just a totally different interpretation. Let's do one more. So, we're going to go to pop style, RB. Back 
for my care and woe. Here I go singing low. Bye bye, blackbird. Kind of funky, maybe a little too slow. So when the style changes, the tempo usually does too. But you can always adjust the tempo settings here until it feels right to you. You can use the plus or minus arrows, or just type in a number. Let's see what it sounds like at 120. Back up for my care and woe. Here I go singing low. Bye bye bye. Blackbird. I'd have to work on that one a little bit to make it feel right, but you get the idea. So let's go to another cool feature, the mixer. Here you can see all the instruments that are playing and adjust the volume of each one. If I'm focusing on rhythmic feel, I'll adjust the settings so that I'm only singing with the drums. So let's take down the piano and the bass. This is what it sounds like with just the drums. Pack up all my care and woe, here I go singing low. Bye bye bye, Blackbird. It really forces you to get into the groove. If I want to get a feel for how the melody fits over the bass line, I can just sing with the bass. So I'm going to take the drums down, pull the bass up. And pack up all my care and woe. Here I go singing low. Bye, bye, Blackbird. Maybe you have a gig without a bass player or drummer. You can practice for that by just practicing with the chordal instrument. We've got piano right here. We'll take out the bass and drums. Head on in. Pack up all my care and woe, here I go singing low, bye bye, blackbird. So that's kind of cool too. Later, when I'm working on arrangements for songs, I can experiment with instrumentation. For instance, I can hear what it would sound like to sing the first verse with bass only and have the rest of the band come in later. The other really cool thing that you can do with the mixer is you can change the instruments. So we had piano, acoustic bass, and drums going in this song. Let's see what it sounds like if we change it to jazz organ and electric bass. That's kind of fun, right? And then when, of course, when you're in any of these other styles, we can go bossa acoustic again, see what it sounds like with the uh, instruments that are already in here. We've got jazz guitar, acoustic bass, drums. Let's do nylon guitar. Beautiful. I like that much better, actually. The other thing you'll find in the mixer is where you set the count in. Let's take a look. The amount of bars I have or measures that I have for this particular tune are just right. It goes fast, so I need a little time to get set up in my mind. If it feels like it's taking forever, you can also just make it one measure, automatic, or no count in. I'm going to leave it at two measures. If there's a section of the song you need to repeat to learn it better, just click and drag over that section, and it will start and end where it's been highlighted. Really helpful when you're trying to learn the bridge and you just need to repeat it over and over. Speaking of arrangements, you can create your own here. Just click on the edit button up here in the corner 
and you can alter the chart you've downloaded or create your own from scratch. Once you've made changes to your chart, you can share it. When you open up the sharing menu, you'll see a bunch of options. Click on share chord chart. And here you'll see ways to send the chart via email or text or save it to different programs in your computer or mobile device. You can also save it as a PDF file or print it. When you click share audio back here, you can save a recording of the backing track for the chart as an AAC, WAVE, or MIDI file. You can share your playlist here or even record from this menu. I love to research songs, so one of my favorite features here is the Find on the Web option. Click on it and you'll find yourself on a whole Google page with a Wikipedia article, videos, and more to dive into. All of this is great stuff, but what about the melody? You might have noticed that there's one thing missing from these charts, the melody. Unfortunately, including it would be a copyright issue. So what do you do if you don't know the melody of a song? You'll have to find it elsewhere. So remember that button I just showed you that takes you to the song on the web? That's a great place to start. So let's go back to share, open up that menu, click find on the web, and see what we get. All right, so we got Bye Bye Blackbird plus song. I'm gonna change this to sheet plus music plus vocal and see what we get. Okay, there are three sheet music companies that usually pop up here. Sheet Music Plus, Sheet Music Direct, and Music Notes. Each company has its strengths and weaknesses, but if you're not a great sight singer, no worries. Some songs also have some form of interactive capability. For instance, Music Notes has a downloadable app that you can play the sheet music in once you purchase it. Let's take a look at Bye Bye Blackbird on their website. Before you buy, you can check out the song with their handy web player. Now, it sounds kind of like a kid's piano, but at least it will give you some idea of the original melody. You can also change the key right here. Once you buy the song and download their free app, you've got a few more options. You can adjust the key here, tempo, and supposedly the balance between the chords and the melody, but I haven't had good luck with that feature. But at least you can hear the melody like this. And there's a little bit of red that goes by as it's playing the melody. And you can also slow that melody down when you're learning it, which is helpful. So let's make it half that speed. Another fun way to practice songs you're learning is with backing tracks. The cheapest and easiest way to do this is to find recordings on YouTube. So here are the results of a search I did for Bye Bye Blackbird. And here's my favorite. Let's listen to it. This one's from a jazz singer who decided to share the arrangements she was creating with something called Band in a Box. Now, I've not used Band in a Box myself, but some of my students and singer friends have, and it really sounds amazing. Much better than iReal because the sounds in it are created by professional musicians. Some people even use it to create backing tracks for professional recordings. It sounds that good. In fact, when I was looking around in Band in a Box for this course, I found some tracks that were created by a friend of ours. He was actually the producer on our very first New Shoes record. His name's Jeff Lorber, and he made this track, and it sounds great. <laughs> I think 
there's more to discover here. So I'll leave a link for it in the lesson notes in case you're interested in researching further. In this section, I'll share some recording apps that my students have found useful and are relatively easy to use. But because I'm not an expert on any of these, and there are so many great tutorials for them on YouTube, I won't go into as much detail here as I did with iReel, but there are some tips for singers that I'll highlight for you. Feel free to skip over the apps you're already familiar with. So this first one is Audacity. Audacity is a free, open source, multi-track audio editor and recorder. It works on any operating system and it's been around for 20 years, so they've had a lot of time to work out the bugs. One feature that I've used with my students reduces the vocal in a recording. It works best with vocal tracks that aren't drenched in effects like reverb. The vocals aren't taken out completely, but if you want to practice with a backing track and one doesn't exist in iReel, or you can't find a karaoke version in the key you want to sing a song in, it works well enough. You'll find a link to a YouTube tutorial that will show you how to do that in the notes for this lesson. If you have an Apple computer or mobile device, GarageBand is great for recording yourself while practicing. And this is my biggest tip for this particular app. If you'd like to get better at singing in tune, you can use the app to record yourself, auto-tune your vocal track, and then sing along with the in-tune track. As I mentioned in the lesson on listening in your practice, there's something magical about hearing your own voice singing in tune. It embeds the model more deeply. If you're not an Apple user, you can download a plugin for Audacity called GSnap that will do the same thing. If you'd like to test it out, just look for the WikiHow tutorial link in the lesson notes. Okay, so these are goofy looking, but hear me out. This is a young man singing with a device on his head called earphones. They're designed to help you hear yourself instantaneously when you're singing. Unlike headphones, there's nothing in between your voice and your ears. No microphone, no effects. It's just you and the sound you're making. So whether we're speaking or singing, we don't hear ourselves very well because the sounds coming out of our mouth are moving away from our ears. Hearphones are designed to help direct the sounds coming out of your mouth back to your ears. It's not an inexpensive device, but if you're having trouble with the more subtle aspects of singing at lower volumes especially, earphones are a worthy investment. They'll also help you get used to hearing yourself before you record. I can't tell you how many times I've worked with singers who've had trouble making the leap from live performance to recording. If you're not used to hearing yourself well, it can be shocking to have headphones on. Every little vocal imperfection that comes out of your mouth sounds larger than life. Getting a feel for performing in the studio is critical. Hearphones and recording yourself with headphones during your practice sessions will go a long way towards preparing you for studio singing. In lesson number three, you learned about changing the tempo of the song and your practicing to make sure the mental map is fully formed and dependable but how to do it with a backing track. Both Audacity and GarageBand are great for changing the tempo of a tune without altering its key. The Amazing Slow Downer is another app that will change the speed of a track for you. The Amazing Slow Downer is really simple to use. All it does is change the tempo of the recording you're practicing with. If you'd like to try it out, you'll find a link in the lesson notes. That's it for practice tools. If you have some favorites that I haven't covered here, please share them with us in the community. We'd love to hear about them.